my mind a lot. Don't need no time, watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay, miss you every day. You like my oxygen. Make it seem like the barging them. Got my heart no barging in. From the back to the floor to the couch. Might wake the neighbors up. Break you in and break you out. In the end, we gon' make a child. Then we gon' hit the show. Part two, break you in and... From the Rockville campus of Montgomery College, Montgomery College Television presents NJCAA Men's Soccer with this beautiful shot from the drone above the Rock, the Rockville campus soccer complex here. The Montgomery College Raptors welcome in the Monroe Community College Tribunes in what should be an excellent NJCAA Division I soccer match today. And it is my pleasure to be joined today by two former MC soccer players on my right. I've got Sonia Rada, and on my left, I've got Andre Anderson. So I am surrounded here by soccer experts, both of them, as I said, former players from Montgomery College. Sonia, welcome, and uh, what do you think about today's match? Thanks, Michael. Um, well, first of all, it's a beautiful day to play. This is going to be a great matchup. Um, the Raptors played yesterday, so... You know, this is a good time to see how their depth on their bench is, and uh, I think it's going to be a great match. Andre, your thoughts? The sun is out, so it's going to be a very uh, game played in very good conditions. Uh, no rain, uh, not much clouds in the sky, so it's a beautiful day for soccer. It is indeed, and uh, we're going to uh, meet the uh, starters for both teams for the visitors from Monroe Community College in Rochester, New York. Their starters are number one in, in goal, Damian Bowler. Number two, Sasha Snyder. Number three, Anton Kelly. Number five, Aishu Nishizono. Number six, Sean Dickey. Number seven, and their leading scorer, Brandon Johnson. Number 10, Mohamed Suhail. Number 11, Liam Cowie. Number 14, Ilya Michalati. And number 23, Demetrios Kira Aziz. Their head coach is Craig Dewar. Craig is in his fourth season at Monroe Community College. His assistants are Marcelo Moraya and Mike Carapides. Starters for Montgomery College, and there we get a good look at uh, the, uh, the uh, Raptors coaches, so we might as well introduce them first. On the right, Pedro Braz. Next to him is the goalkeeping coach, Kareem Mumban. Next to him, Scott Payne. And finally, Isaac Mensa yabo Those are the coaches for the Raptors. Starters for the Raptors. In goal, number one, Thomas Morrow. Number three, Yoshke Ono. Number five, Brian Nuchang. Number six, Andreas De Castro Sanchez. Number eight, Joao Ribeiro. Number 12, Jason Guevara. Number 14, and the leading scorer for the Raptors, Carl Romberg. Number 20, Andres Rojas. Number 23, Ish Singh. And number 33, Amadou Koita. So these two teams have a history, even though they are uh, quite a, a distance apart. Uh, they had a, a very fateful meeting uh, last season in the semifinals of the district championships, and uh, the Raptors came out on top in that one, Sonia, 4-1. Yeah, 4-1. So, you know, this is going to be a good matchup as well to see how both teams are doing this year. Um, Monroe Community College is 6-0-1, oh, and, and the Raptors are 8-3-1. And, one. and uh, Andre, uh, Andre uh, also Monroe is currently ranked number 20 in the NJCAA uh, Top 20. Yeah, so this is a great game for MC to come out here um, from the beginning, put their presence on this team, show them. 
um, that even though MC is no longer ranked in the top 20, that they deserve to be back in the rankings. Uh, a win here could really, you know, possibly get them back there. Oh, I think it would. I think a, a win here today, um, coming off their uh, big win yesterday over uh, Hagerstown, another Division One opponent, they just absolutely dominated that one with an 8-0 win over Hagerstown. So I think it was actually 10. 10. Yeah, 10. Okay, 10-0. You lose track after a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the Raptors didn't lose track, and uh, Hagerstown may have wanted to lose track. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> here come the Raptors out on the field, and, and we just have to comment on this absolutely gorgeous – drone shot that we use to open our uh, broadcast and and look at it here it's just uh, these these shots just blow me away they're amazing they're amazing i mean i have a smile on my face just looking at it. it's incredible it really is uh mctv just keeps upping the ante keeps improving um you know i'll tell you one thing there is no such thing as complacency when it comes to mc uh television production that is for sure so we are underway and uh monroe will be playing wearing the gray black uh uniforms with the yellow numbers the raptors in white with their tw uh their uh purple numerals and we are underway two of the top teams in all of division one soccer this is going to be a great match for both of them and I think it's a good test. You know, we were mentioning that uh, the Raptors just got out of the, the poll. You know, they were ranked 19th, and now they're out. And, you know, sometimes that can be a good thing. It can push you a little bit more because it puts a little chip on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see what MC has to bring to this game today. Well, I think the reason that they fell out was because they, they took a trip to Texas, right, Andre? And uh, they played one of the top uh, Division I programs in the country, Tyler, Texas. And you went on that trip with them. Yeah, I was actually over there, and um, MC played a very good game. Um, it was a difficult game. Tyler's very good. I believe they're ranked in the top ten in, in the country, or, or just a little bit out if they're not in the top ten. But uh, MC fought from the beginning. Um, two goals were let in um, kind of, uh, I wouldn't say unexpectedly, but it were, they're kind of cheap goals to give away. Um but other than that, they played well. They put on the pressure. And Tyler, actually, after the game, they were very surprised. by it. A lot of the coaches were actually saying, we didn't expect you guys to beat this good. It's like, well, from Montgomery College, we're going to be good in everything. That's <laughs> right. The Raptors went to uh, Nationals last year. As we mentioned earlier, they knocked off uh, this very same Monroe team uh, in the uh, uh, district semifinals. And then they went on the following week to win the districts by beating Monroe College. So it gets a little confusing. This is Monroe Community College, uh, who they beat in the district semis last year. And then they went on to defeat Monroe College in the district finals to advance to nationals. So... Uh, yeah, I think it makes it even more confusing that they're both from New York, right? They're both from New York, <laughs> yeah. uh, even though they are from different, uh, vastly different uh, areas of New York. As we said, uh, the Tribunes are from Rochester, and um, Monroe College is from the Bronx. That was good pressure there by Amadou. One thing about Amadou that you're seeing um, compared to the other players is he's very tall. He's a very tall and lean player. He's about six foot three, I would say. He would maybe say he's six foot five because who doesn't <laughs> want to add on the extra inches? But he's um, a very tall player, athletic, and he's very fast as well. So um, keep an eye out for those long balls over the top and Amadou looking to uh, you know get on the end of those and score some goals. Well, he's uh, he's been coming on strong of late, um, and he's got four goals now on the season. Um, so he's, he's been coming on with his scoring. And he's just a freshman. So, you know, he's still learning a game at this level. Yeah, and actually uh, a quick fun fact about Amadou. I, after speaking with him and just learning a little bit about him, he said he actually tried out as a center back. And uh, he made the team. And, you know, he was playing in the center back position. 
But there are two studs uh, for MC playing center back, Ish and uh, Brian. In one game, he said Coach Pedro put him up top, and he actually scored a goal that game, and ever since then he's been a forward. Well, you know, he looks like a guy who would be a center back. Yeah. A lot of center backs are tall and lean, and uh, he has that look. But, boy, what a weapon he could be uh, on the offensive end. I'm thinking on corners, mm -hmm. and, and like you said, he's very fast, so he can run down that long ball, catch up to that through ball. You know, those two positions, even though they seem, and they're obviously on opposite ends of the field, mm -hmm. but a lot of times you see that intersect because, you know, a center back needs to be fast, a forward needs to be fast, yep. right? And obviously a height and size helps for a center back, but it also can cause a lot of problems on the opposite end. So that's why a lot of times you see people are able to inter interchange in those positions. Obviously, you need to have a lot of composure up top as well um, to be a finisher, Whereas in the back, maybe you just need to be better on your feet and just be able to distribute. But still, you know, your teammates rely on you in the back. So you need to be on point as well. All excellent points and all true. And again, I think he could be a real weapon and a good compliment. Um, of course, the, the number one score for the Raptors so far this season is number 14 out there. Uh, Carl Romberg, Carl with 17 goals uh, on the season, leads the Raptors. As a matter of fact, uh, he's tied for first in the country mm -hmm. with 17 goals. Uh, somehow, weirdly, he's in second in Maryland Juco, but that's because Maryland Juco, of course, uh, encompasses divisions one, two, and three, so... They, uh, they don't separate them when it comes to uh, stats in Maryland Juco by, by uh, division. Yeah, but Carl Romberg, number 14, you see him playing that, like, number 10 role, which is usually the, the maestro role, the playmaker. Did I say that right, Sonia? Yes, Sonia? Okay. maestro. Yeah, maestro. There right, you got to roll the R's Perfect. a little bit. There you go. But <laughs> it's he, in you. It's <laughs> in you. <laughs> but the uh, number 10 role, and he's a, a playmaker, um, but he's also getting up there as a forward and scoring the goal, so. Oh, wow. A little collision. But, yeah, he's a very good player. Thomas Morrow there with a nice kick. However, it goes out of bounds, and it'll go back over to uh, the Tribunes. And I kind of like that Morrow took an extra touch there, getting his touches on the ball early. We spoke about that last time, how important it is to have a goalie that can use their feet. And, you know, you can see the confidence that he has any uh, any other well not necessarily any other keeper but maybe another keeper that's not as confident would have just kicked that right out right mm -hmm. first time so I see that MC's back line and their goalie they're they're really trying to possess the ball a little bit um, th that's good to get that foundation going in the in the first parts of the game well Morrow's had a very good season um, he's third in Maryland JUCO and go there's a little bit of a situation that he just cleaned up yeah that could have been a that lot could have worse been a disaster <laughs> oh yeah that was a great ball um over the top by uh, brandon johnson um but th that finish was uh, uh was quite off but still i mean that could have been a problem the raptors on the attack yeah look at the strength by koita yeah and that that was a perfectly look at him Oh, uh, they called him ball, but ball. Yeah. you're seeing his strength and athleticism up there. Yeah, and MC's a... back line's looking for him. Mm -hmm. Every You know, we've had maybe two or three opportunities already that sometimes the ball, they kind of just floated up there, but he's able to make something of it. And uh, he's also a bit of an anomaly, uh, anomaly considering uh, how international both these rosters are. Amadou is from Silver Spring. He went to... Kennedy High School, so he's a local product. Both of these teams feature a heavily uh, international roster. Um, I had a chance to talk to uh, Craig Dewar, the um, head coach for uh, Monroe, just a little bit before the game, and he is from Scotland. Uh, and so I said, oh, well, that explains a lot because uh, on his roster, he's got several players from Scotland, uh, a handful from England, uh, Switzerland, 
uh, the Netherlands, Italy, Peru, Brazil, Japan. I mean, they're all they're over. Everywhere. Greece. Wow. Greece. Don't forget New York now. And he's got. <laughs> he does have a couple of players from New York. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. But the Raptors are are similarly uh, international with players from uh, from Cameroon and Brazil and Germany and Canada and uh, Japan, Italy, Colombia. So, one Colombian. Colombian. Yep, one Colombian. That's near and dear to uh, to Sonia's heart. So. Yeah, I am surrounded here, folks, by two uh, former captains of, from the Raptors. And both uh, were excellent players who I enjoyed covering in my uh, days covering athletics here on a regular basis. Gave me a lot of moments of enjoyment. Here we go, Raptors. Finish Good that. Luck. Oh! Koita set up. Uh, Romberg, and Romberg was just wide with the shot. They seem to have a good partnership up top. What do you think, Sonia? Yeah, definitely. I kind of wish that Romberg would have let that come across his body a little bit more because uh -huh. it closed his angle, and that's why he was – he you know, it, it went inside the – or left of the of the post. But yeah, that's a good point. A good, it was a good setup. Maybe just a little anxious there. Possibly, yes. Raptors trying to put the pressure on, trying to keep the ball down in their end. Monroe comes into this one undefeated. They are 6-0-1. Uh, oh, uh, they had an unblemished record until last week when they tied Mohawk Valley 1-1. Uh, one, one. So they, are, uh, they have yet to be defeated this year, and they can really score the ball. Um, they're averaging s o almost seven goals a game, 6.71 goals a game. That's a lot of goals. Yeah. That is a lot of goals, 47 goals in seven matches. It makes so. sense. Well, they haven't lost yet. Yeah. Yeah. And their defense has been excellent as well. Um, their uh, starting keeper, uh, Bolin, has a .47 goals against average. He's only allowed three goals all season. But again, the Raptors have played several more games. So the stats are interesting. They're not exactly comparable. At the end of the day, when playoffs come around, it's who can do it. It doesn't matter what you did in the past, right? It's who can do it in that moment on that day. Absolutely. Great combination there. Oh, that was pretty. Raptors on the attack. Ooh. Romberg tried one from outside the box. Gooley was off his line as well. That could have uh, been interesting. Lucky, uh, well, not lucky, but uh, a big save there by uh, the defender for corner kick for Monroe. That'll set up a corner for the Raptors. Let's see who's going to take it. We're in the first half of play. Here's a good look at Damian Bowler, the keeper for um, Monroe. He is from Haydn, Switzerland. Mm. And this will set up a corner for the Raptors. Cannot make out the number. It's Guevara, number 12. Number 12. Jason Guevara. Can't mistake those bright cleats. Yeah. <laughs> wow, great turn. Oh. oh. That almost needs to be, unless it was blocked up into the air. I was going to say, that was a great turn. Mm -hmm. But that needs to be almost like a pass, you know, diagonally back on the ground so that someone can just tap it in. Yeah, that would have been easy tap. And that's actually what I thought he was going to do. But yeah. Sometimes when you're under that pressure, it's harder. So here comes it's easier Guevara for us, again. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's been a long time since I've been out there. Different look. Oh. That'll be a goal kick for Monroe. That one didn't go anywhere. 
I think Monroe was prepared for that one. Mm-hmm. That's a, a set play yeah. that MC practices, and when it doesn't work, he tried to improvise a little bit, but Monroe was ready. The pressure's on from MC as well right now. You're seeing that the ball is living as a foul. The ball is living in this half. Um, most of the time that the ball has been in the uh, MC's, you know, MC's half, there was that one opportunity. But other than that, Thomas, um, the goalkeeper, Morrow, has been really doing nothing. No, he's uh, he's a spectator right now. Of course, that can change in a split second. We see it all the time in this sport. One of the beauties of it. And there's those flashy Guevara cleats. Good job. Okay. Okay. Sanchez with a miss attempt. A miss attempt. I think he was trying to put Koita in, but it just went a little bit too far. You're going to want to keep the pressure going. You see how high the the back line is right here. They're at the midfield line. Yeah. They want to keep this, you know, packed in. They want to keep this in their half. Can they win it? New Chang won that one. And now you squeeze and you pressure. Keep the – there it is. Jason needs to win this, and he does. He does. Who's ball? A lot of, you know, people who say uh, soccer is not a contact sport <laughs> yeah. have never played soccer. Who yeah. says that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one. <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, it's the, it, no, it's American thinking, oh, you know, okay. because they're used to American football, you know, oh, which is with the pads and the shoulder pads and the helmets. And, yeah. You know, these guys are just out there uh, with no – protection basically yeah i mean i wouldn't even consider what you know the american football that is more than contact that is you know it's kind of like gladiator sports <laughs> yeah. i mean yeah but i think rugby's worse <laughs> oh rugby's oh i think too. so too i have so much respect for rugby players because they don't wear anything yeah they don't i mean well they wear a uniform oh wow good <laughs> cut good finish oh, oh. Robert. oh. Whew. That's some great individual skill by yeah. Romberg. Chest over the ball a little bit when he takes that shot to maybe keep it down a bit. Chest high. So he's been uh, he's been close now on two uh, two shot attempts. And uh, the keeper uh, bowler is not particularly tall, uh, so. Maybe an opportunity there, and that's that's what Romberg was going for. Top shelf. Good win. That's Guevara. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was uh, Romberg. I think that was Rojas. No. Nope. Yeah, Andres. Uh, was it? Yeah, Rojas. So he's one of the smaller uh, individuals on the field, and he had a good header there. And MC is shooting from anywhere right now. 25 yeah. yards out. I mean. Meanwhile, they're playing a defense that has really been very, very stingy. They've allowed less than half a goal a game. Wow. So, perhaps they saw something. I think MC's doing a good job of putting the pressure on to not make them feel comfortable playing out of the back. You see the goalie mm-hmm. playing long every time. And – you know, MC's winning it right back. So I think that's working in MC's favor. Rara to sing. This thing, one of the captains for the Raptors to another captain of the Raptors, Brian Newchang. For the, for the Raptors, the uh, green band on the, the arm designates ball. them as a captain. That was a beauty. Got a 
I don't think that's a foul. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> that was a very ticky-tack call. I'm not sure. I guess there was some contact there, but it certainly wasn't egregious. No, yeah, I mean, you're seeing even on the screen right here, um, Amadou uh, Koita, he was the one that actually the guy <laughs> bumped into him and exactly. fell. Yeah. Yeah, you're seeing right here on the replay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm know. not sure what Amadou did there. Yeah, he didn't do anything. <laughs> and that's exactly what he told the referee. Oh, okay. Decent now here's an opportunity up. for Monroe, and woo. That was on frame. That was on frame is right. That was Ogawa with the shot, and man, Morrow had to be sure-handed there, and he was going to take another look. Boom. I think position MC needs to be careful, like you were saying, Michael, earlier. In any second, the game could change, and right now the Raptors have more of the ball, but you saw there three three of uh, Monroe's players pressured um, Guevara in the back, and it led to that attack. So they have to be careful not to give up anything easy. Well, not necessarily easy, but just on the counter. So now Monroe possessing. Yeah, they're switching roles now. Now they're holding the ball in MC's half, moving it back and forth. And this is something they're not, ooh, they got to be careful now. That back line, basically when that ball is played from the center midfielder over to that right-hand side or the left-hand side, and then that ball is dropped back, the back line has to step up as quick as possible. Because that shot, for instance, you don't want that to happen. So it's like you want that back line to step up as quick as possible, and then you went, you know, the, the legs out to try to block the shot or whatnot, rather than them just kind of sitting and letting him take a shot from 25 yards out. It was a bad shot, but, you know, you never know. The next one could be on point. Exactly. Yeah. So, of course, uh, we uh, have a continuous clock here. Uh, we did not get any word whether or not they were go going to take a uh, hydration break. Um so I'm guessing it may not be hot enough. Probably not. Even though for early October, it's it's fairly warm. Oh, yeah. And Minhas is in the game now. It's a center, a center mid change. Daniel Minhas has uh, got two goals and two assists on the season. He's been a, con uh, a strong contributor for the uh, Raptors this year. A little bit of a uh, position change for him. I haven't really seen him play uh, in the midfield all season. so Or at least the center midfield position all season. Shows his versatility. MC's not necessarily possessing or winning the midfield. Well, the ball hasn't really been played in the midfield, so maybe Coach Browse is looking for someone to hold the ball a little bit more, mm -hmm. gain a little bit of control of the game. Oh, no. To Gravara. And too much. Too much on that one. He'll go back over to the Raptors. Now let's keep the ball. Let's possess it. Let's move it. I think that's what MC should be looking to do right now. As the game kind of uh, went to like a stalemate of 50-50% uh, uh, possession rather than, than it being what it was earlier, which was MC dominating. Yeah. And MC had several opportunities have yet to convert. Neither team has converted, of course. There's Ish Singh with an aggressive move. But that'll set up a goal kick for Monroe. These two teams could very well meet again later this season in the districts. Believe it or not, the season, the regular season, is going by rather quickly. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Raptors with just three more regular season matches. Wow. It's crazy. Once October hits, I feel like it goes so fast. Yeah, yeah. The year's going by fast. I mean, 
It's like, you know, every every time I blink, I feel like it's like another holiday season, you know, another Christmas. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Halloween is coming up. <laughs> Halloween? Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you have a costume? Uh, uh ho- Hopefully not. <laughs> Put it that way, because what I've been hearing from the, from the the you know the girlfriend is, this costume, that costume, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, How about you, Michael? Uh, I'm not a costume guy. How about you, Sonia? I don't have anything planned yet, but I I do like Halloween, and I like at least before I used to like making my costume, but I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> okay. What is your uh, what was your last costume that you or character you were? I made a Bowser costume, Ooh, which was nice. It was really I don't know if it looked exactly like Bowser, but at least it was creative and <laughs> <laughs> it gave me something to do. <laughs> okay. Very nice. And then go to Halloween candy. You know, I'm not much of a candy person. Um, oh, Raptor. Ooh. Oh no, just a little late getting there. I'll probably be the person hanging, uh, handing out fruit on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says, don't go to that yeah, house. I was like, yeah, I'll make sure not to show up to your house. Stay away from the Rada house. <laughs> yeah. She's giving out healthy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give out a toothbrush to help <laughs> with all the candy. <laughs> Little sample uh, tube of toothpaste. Yeah. It's but actually a good idea. <laughs> you, you know, it's not bad. Yeah, like like I said, uh, uh, I will not be showing up to. <laughs> uh, but I do want to uh, comment on uh, Brian Newchang's um, the his uh, ball distribution so far out the back has been very good. It's been very good. The back line hasn't been tested too much yet, Mm-mm. but uh, you know, it, he has done very well. Uh, Good touches on the ball. And sing to Romberg to Guevara. He's been aggressive today. He has. Oh, that's a foul. Ooh, that's got Or not. Wow. No call. I didn't think that was a foul. Oh, yeah? I think that was a good defensive play. Put his body in front of it, but I'm also biased. I don't think anything's a foul. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I do have two defense players on on both sides of me here. Both you guys were on the back line, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So they have a lot in common. You know, I I feel sometimes for, uh, you know, the midfielders and forwards, Sometimes they don't get the calls and things like that. And as a defender, you know, I'm like, oh, nothing is a call. It could be definitely a, ta- uh, you know, a bad tackle. But as a defender, you're like, what? That's not a foul. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you do foul a player and then they don't get the call. And in, in your head, I'm like, yeah. But then I'm like, you know, I do feel bad for you sometimes. Good look there at Daniel Minhas. He's from Canada. And Booth just checked in the game. Oh, Nathan Booth. A freshman out of uh, Einstein High School has just checked in for the Raptors. Number two. Nathan's easy to spot. He has a distinctive hairstyle. Yeah. He's saying covering a lot of ground there. He's a little out of position right now. Getting back. And yeah, Monroe, they're possessing it. Yeah, they are. They're they're, they're some nice passing here. Someone has to step. See, that's the part I'm talking about. They need to step a little bit more. As the back line, I mean, they're just kind of hanging back there rather than stepping up and trying to win that ball back. Oh, the Raptors man. win it back, but then they that give pass. it right away right away. No score, and the clock winding down here in the first half. Got just uh, about 16 minutes to go. Both teams have had a couple of nice opportunities, but no one has been able to convert.
And we, you know, we have one more match on uh, the MCTV soccer schedule for the season. Um, that'll be next week. We'll be back out here on Thursday, a week from today, covering the Raptors women's team. They've been having a good season themselves. Excellent season. Uh, it's actually it's really fun watching them play. They have um, good players. They move the ball, score a lot of goals as well, which is also a lot of fun to watch. And we uh, we also have plans to MCTV also has plans to do a good chunk of basketball games uh, starting in November. So looking forward to that. Good job. Monroe has yet to uh, come up with a corner. Raptors have had a couple corners. Oh, good job by Brian being in the right place right there. Yeah, he stopped that attack there by Morrell. Swing the ball. They got to swing it quick. There you go. Come on. Gravara. Great ball over the top. Down to Booth. Oh. Offsides. And that'll turn the ball back over to Monroe. So I have, a, I have a, a little question. Yes. So Monroe Community College tri Tribunes. Yes. What is a Tribune? A Tribune is a Roman soldier. Okay. You were right. Sonia was right. I mean, I, I cheated a little bit because <laughs> oh. I looked at the picture of the mascot. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> the mascot, as you can see on the upper corner of your screen right now, is a... Uh, is a Tribune decked out in his uh, battle helmet. But I knew that I knew that quiz was coming. <laughs> I just knew it. What's a raptor? No, I'm just <laughs> 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 Well, you know, there, it's funny you mentioned that because people, a lot of people think a raptor is a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is not. A raptor is a... An avian. It is a bird of prey. And today the Raptors are hoping to uh, feast on the tributes. Yeah. That would be one dinner, you know. That'd be a, quite a quite a dinner. Yeah. And I know. Uh, quite a catch. Head coach uh, Pedro Braz would love nothing better. Yeah. Um. Pedro is in his second stint here at Montgomery College. He coached back in the uh, early, uh, well, he had one stint here for three seasons, took the team to nationals every year, and uh, Andre played during his first tenure here. Mm -hmm. Then he left and was head coach at Gallaudet University for several seasons, and then returned a couple of years ago to Montgomery College. And as a matter of fact, recently just won his 100th game as a head coach here at Montgomery College. Very impressive. Terrific guy, runs a terrific program, an excellent coach. And of course, he, he has played uh, professionally, mm -hmm. played in college at uh, Vermont. Uh, University of New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Played for his country of Angola. Right. So he's played all levels, top levels. Coached at you know all levels, top levels. Definitely the best uh, coach I've had, and for sure one of the most serious as well. He's a great guy. Paige and I have a really good friendship as well, especially now. But um, when I uh, was a player, oh man. 
You know, he, he can be very serious. But that's what you want out of your coach, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, you don't want someone who's going to joke around all the time. And, no. And uh, just, you know, lollygag, ha-ha joke and laughs. It's like. They're not going to last long. No. Because the players are going to run over them. Exactly. You want someone that who you respect and someone that you know, you know, knows what they're talking about. And that's exactly who Coach Pedro is. And people want to be challenged. Exactly. I think you really embrace when you're challenged and can overcome something mm -hmm. with a group. So I think that's. So a throw in, a deep throw in for the Raptors. Good look at Jason Guevara there. He gets it in. Oh, but it goes right back out of bounds. And Monroe with the ball. Get ahead to Nathan Booth. And he maintains possession nicely. Across the field. And they're going to call a foul on the Raptors. On uh, Cesare Ch Biacci. Yeah. He didn't agree with it. Yeah. I know that's a surprise to both of you. <laughs> I don't think any time in any sport <laughs> that you create, you commit a foul that you think you've committed that foul. No. Even if it's a foul that was just so blatant. <laughs> We've seen it in everything. You know, a guy is never out of second base when he tries to steal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, the football player never clips the guy. Yeah, never holds them. Never holds. Yep. Basketball, of course, nobody's ever committed a foul. Oh, ever. <laughs> you ever. know, here comes the Raptors. Looks like they had something set up there. So the same is true for soccer. But so far, this has been a very clean match. It has. It has no, uh, you know, over-the-line tackles or fouls. Um, no chippiness at all that none. I've seen. Two good teams keeping their heads in the game. And uh, that clock is running down on the first half. We're scoreless. I know both teams would want a goal. Now, oh, nothing. It'd be nothing better for one of them to score here. Yeah, go into the half with a lead. And I always have this theory, in uh, I'll at least say in soccer, and it was one my dad always used to tell me. And it was that you know teams usually give up goals the most at the end of the first half and towards the end of the game. And then I was asking why, why is it the case, Dad? And he said, well, that's usually when teams are the most tired. You know, you've been playing for 45 minutes or so. You've been running. You've been hustling. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you do see the clock and now it is winding down and you're getting closer to that um, to that uh, halftime break or the end of the game. So you kind of like switch off for a second. But the thing in the thing is in soccer is you can't switch off for a second ever. No. So that's usually when we end up seeing goals around this time. So let's see if my father's theory was right or if he was just lying to me. <laughs> no, I think your dad was being straight, and um, it just depends <laughs> on uh, it just depends on uh, the will of these two defenses. I think the most important, though, even though getting a goal before the half is very important and can you know shift the momentum, mm -hmm. most important is to not give up a goal. Yeah, because it's zero zero and. If both teams go in that way, you come out and it's as if it's the beginning of the game again. Mm -hmm. So it's more lethal, I believe, to, 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 give one to, up. to give one up versus scoring one. Kind of deflating after having, you know, played so well and then, and then there's that momentary lapse or whatever. Now that had to be a foul. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. No way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. And that should be a yellow card. It kind should. of. But in yeah, the I'm defense sure. of Monroe player, he wasn't even looking. He was, I believe, tying his shoe or something. That was Ogawa, who has had the best opportunity uh, of the match so far for Monroe. But Mara was there to stop his shot. 
So this is uh, Jason uh, Guevara again, who's not been out of the match yet. Neither team is doing a lot of substituting at the moment. Although uh, Amadou Koita is out for the Raptors. Booth is in for him. Everybody up for the Raptors except for, of course, the keeper, Morrow. This is a this is a set piece here. Let's see what they come up with. That needs to be a better service. And I know I know Jason has a clinical left foot, so that needs to be a little bit better. Minhas has brought a lot of good energy as soon as he came in, and you can see the effort that he just put in to keep that ball in. Those are things that any coach loves to see from their players. So let's see, is Ish or, oh, Jason's gonna take it again, yeah. okay. It's a good way to redeem yourself. Better service here. So who's gonna take it? Sing or Guevara? I'm going to guess Singh. Then I'll guess Guevara. <laughs> and we're going to see. Are we uh, going to bet one of these tremendous Granny Smith apples that I have in front of me? <laughs> oh, that is high stakes. Yeah, there we go. We can't, you know, this is... This I is mean, if you're betting Granny Smith apples on this, wow. Mm -hmm. You're going for the for the <laughs> moon. <laughs> Uh, oh, Guevara. Oh. 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 Brian Nuchang almost came up with it. That was a much better cross, too, because it actually made it over the defenders into a difficult position for the goalie. Yeah, the keeper uh, had his work cut out there. Nuchang almost put that one in. Good look at it. Down to the f just about the five minute mark. Still scoreless. And you don't want to go anywhere for halftime. We've got something special coming up for you at halftime. We'll let you know on that in just a couple of minutes. But if you're a soccer fan, well, I, why else would you be watching this match if you weren't? Uh, halftime is going to be of interest to you. Okay. So about four minutes, 30 seconds left. Balls out of bounds. See, the mistakes are starting to kick in a little bit. Yeah. Teams are a little bit tired. And, again, neither team has, has gone uh, to their bench all that often. Now, that's that's the one interesting thing about soccer, um, especially at the professional level, um, how that you're only allowed to – well, that's actually a new rule now. That's Is it five now, Sonia, or is it? Yes. After COVID, they changed the rule to five. They uh, allow five substitutions. Five now. Before, before, it used to be three. Yeah, it was only three. And I used to love that, to be honest. Only three people are allowed to sub in per game because it shows the fitness of a player. And, like, you know, you have to be 90-minute fit. Because they only can make three subs. Oh, that's a good spot to get the ball. Yeah, that is a very good spot. Just a raise there. And Great defense. Biachi got it out. That's not a foul. Okay, no. good. They're going to say high kick maybe, but good job by the ref. And MC gives it away. Monroe pressing here. They're trying to prove your dad correct. I know. Andre. You know what I'll say is there's a foul. Even if it doesn't you know, deemed to be true today. I think more often than not, you are correct. 
I've seen it many times, and of course you guys, I'm sure have, having played the sport. No, okay. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. It's a handball. And it'll go over to Monroe. Well, this is kind of what we expected. Two of the best teams at the D1 level in the NJCAA going at it, and it's really been uh, a tight match. Yeah, both teams, I, I feel neither one has really settled into the game and imposed their own style. I think both teams have been pushed out of their style a bit, and they've had moments, but... It's, it's just kind of been up in the air for either team at this point. Liu Chang. Tried to get it to Booth. It's a good ball. Oh, no, it's not. It's a good attempt. Good attempt. <laughs> this is there. Takes care of it. Oof. Monroe gets it right back, though. Oh. Nice little build up. And once again, shot was there off target, but. Monroe's showing a little something as well. I like Monroe's patience in the final third. Uh -huh. I think they do a good job of not necessarily immediately attacking, but finding a couple extra passes, and they just haven't been able to generate anything from it. But you can see that they have a certain style of play that they're trying to impose. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. They're a little more patient down low. We are under a minute now. Ooh, good leap by Brian. He's a very athletic center back. And he is tall. Out of Paint Branch High School. One of the captains for the Raptors. Clock winding down. Looks like we're going to be scoreless at the half. Unless something sudden happens, which you can never rule out. You have to knock on wood, Michael. I know. I'm knocking. I just knocked on my Oh. Head. And we almost had a foul in the box. Didn't. That's a professional foul. He knew he was outside of the box or else I don't think he would have been that blatant with it. So there's two seconds on the clock. And that is a foul. So this is going to give an opportunity here for uh, three seconds. We'll put an extra second back on the, on the board. And a great opportunity. We get a look there at uh, Sean Dickey, number six for... Monroe, he's out of Aberdeen, Scotland. Scotland's a nice place. I've been there. Have you? Yeah, I have. Actually, I played in uh, ODP. It's like an Olympic team for the United States back in the day. And we were in Scotland playing uh, a couple teams out there. So well, he's a got an interesting opportunity here. Five seconds now on the clock. Dangerous situation here. There's the kick. And it is for naught. So we are scoreless at the half. 
both teams with a couple of decent opportunities, but were not able to break through. So after uh, 45 minutes of soccer, we are scoreless. And we are going to take a brief break, but uh, we don't want you going anywhere because uh, coming up at halftime, we have a special preview of a, uh, of a show that uh, Montgomery College Television uh, taped the other night. Um, it's an interview between MC's Vanessa Zambrano and NPR's Jasmine Garst. And uh, the subject is Lionel Messi, soccer, and immigration. So uh, very fascinating conversation. We're going to give you a little preview here. So stick with us for that, and then we'll be back in about 10 minutes with the second half. You on my mind a lot. Don't need no time, watch. I don't know how I got you in my pocket spot. Yeah, this bay miss you every day. You like my oxygen. Make it seem like the barge in them. Got my heart no barge in them. From the to the flow to the couch. Might wake the neighbors up. Break you in then break you out. In the end, we gon' make a chat. Then we gon' hit the show. Part two, we don't need no pals. You can't miss me. We gon' get clips. You don't need a power shot. Copy my steel. Face the fact that ain't no cap, I'm real. Ain't no cap, I'm real. Plastic bars from a copy my steel. Copy my steel. Face the fact that ain't no cap, I'm real. Ain't no cap, I'm real. The plastic bars from a copy my steel. Thank you so much. Um, so the conversation will be in English, but uh, if you feel more comfortable when it's time to, do, to ask a question, to do it in Spanish, that's totally fine as well. Um, our esteemed guest, uh, Hasmin Garst, is an award-winning Argentine-American journalist living in New York City. Uh, she started her career as the host of National Public Radio's Ad Latino, a podcast about Latin music and culture. She's currently an immigration correspondent and focuses largely on women's stories. Last year, she created NPR's hit podcast, The Last Cup, La Ultima Copa, which is about Lionel Messi's road to winning the World Cup. <laughs> Welcome to MC, Asmin. Thank, Thank you so for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you like saying a few words? Or you like uh, no, I'm so right happy to be here. I, have, uh, I used to live in this area, and I have many friends who have studied here. Um, and it's, just such, it's a really great institution, so I was... Um, very happy to accept this invitation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Um, so, well, let's let's get into it. Sure. Um, last year, you created the highly successful podcast, The Last Cup, about uh, Messi's path to the World Cup. You focused on his relationship to Argentina, his condition as an immigrant, and from there, you explored your own story of yeah. immigrating to the U.S. from Argentina. In the process, you touched on the very universal experience mm -hmm. of leaving home yearning to go back <laughs> yeah. um, and, and being unable to in many ways, right? Because of you changing, the yeah. place changing, um, that kind of thing. Can you tell us about how and why you decided to explore that topic and how you got the idea of merging all of this? Yeah, so I think, you know, um, I had always been really interested in um, whenever I spoke uh, about Leonel Messi, I, had, I got two very distinct reactions. Um, when I spoke to people from Argentina, from our country, about Lionel Messi, um, it would always be like, eh, he's all right. <laughs> um, and when I would speak to people in the US um, or anywhere else outside of Argentina, they would be like, he's wonderful, he's amazing, he's such a wonderful player. And it was like this very, like in Argentina up until really um, uh, two years ago, he was just like, Either the attitudes were either I don't care or he's kind of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. And then abroad, um, yeah, this, this other thing. And also, I was covering immigration and I kind of kept hearing this story over and over again um, to different degrees, obviously, you know, like whether it was someone who had uh, left by choice, left with a visa, come undocumented, which was one day I really want to go back. Um, and then I would also hear another part of that story, like part two, which was, 
It wasn't the way I thought it would be when I went back. I had built it up in my head. Um, and so I, I was really curious to tell like that part of the story. Um, and then when I went back to Argentina, um, I, I wasn't sure how I was going to develop the story. And um, I, I was looking through my auntie's library and she had this very old copy of the Odyssey, La Odisea. And the Odyssey is a story, um, it's like a Greek classic and it's about a, a young man who uh, leaves his home country um, and he goes abroad and he does amazing things and everyone abroad is just like, wow. Um, and and the, um, but his dream, his fantasy is that he's gonna go back home and and be lauded as a hero. Um, I don't want to ruin the Odyssey for anyone, <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't go well. <laughs> it it is a Greek tragedy. <laughs> um, he basically he goes back home, and the and the Greek are really good about about writing these kinds of stories. He goes back home, and people are like, "Oh, cool, yeah, that's nice, good job. I've moved on," uh, you know, or. I've, um, I've done something else, I waited for you for a while, and then I kept going with my life. And there was something about that story that felt, A, like I could identify with it, and B, I mean, no matter what the circumstance, I think for a lot of immigrants that I spoke to, whether it was the guy who was driving the Uber, or the professor, or whoever, there was that sense of, in my mind, time has stood still. Like, the place I left is exactly the way it was when I left it. But in everyone else's mind, it's, they've moved on. Um, and so you're stuck in some strange, even when I went to Argentina, like, I have this weird thing, I don't know if anyone can identify with, like, I go back and I'm like, wait, the fashion is no longer, like, when I left it, <laughs> they too have uh, moved on from, um, well, low-rise jeans are back, unfortunately. <laughs> but. Um, but it's like, in your mind, it's the place is congealed, and you're going to go back a hero. And Messi was very tragic because he kept trying to come back, and nobody, nobody wanted him. No one cared. Um, and so it was kind of like a very classic hero's journey. Yeah. Which is also, it was a shocker for me as somebody not from Argentina, because <laughs> the, the rest of us were like, Messi, of course, they're so yeah. happy, right? Yeah. Messi. And then I, as I hear you going on about the story, I'm like, wait all these breakups with the with, with their <laughs> yeah. design selection. Yeah. Like I just, you know, it was, I think it's a shocker for a lot of us, but there was this very complicated relationship between Argentina and Messi that you explore very well. Um, so you, you cover immigration. Yeah. So obviously this is, this is on your mind. You are an immigrant, but this time you got to be way more personal than a reporter usually gets to be, yeah. or should be, right? <laughs> was that difficult to do? And was the process also in a way cathartic for you in a way to process your own experience? Yeah, I think, um, you know, to be honest, when I, when I pitched, when I proposed doing The Last Cup, like my, my plan, I, I had been covering the uh, prison system, and I, it, it, you know, como muy quemada. I was just very, like, burnt out. Mm -hmm. And my plan was, I'm going to do a podcast that no one's going to listen to, <laughs> and I'm just going to, like, chill, because it, it'll be a podcast about soccer, and you know, maybe like my family will listen to this, <laughs> but I'm gonna get to really relax. Right. Um, and, and I also, I think I thought like, this is very niche. Like, mm -hmm. not a lot of people are gonna identify with this. Um, and it, it, the opposite ended up happening in which I still get a lot of letters from like people from, no sé, Brazil, uh, alguien de Afghanistan me escribió el otro día. I mean, just like, who really can identify with this process. I think it was something, um, it was very personal. It's stuff that I had been thinking about for a very long time. Um, you know, and in many ways, it's also, it's, it's all these things I had covered. Like, I used to be an economics reporter, right? And I had covered economics. Um, I had covered the criminal justice system. And it was like a more personal way to look into it. It's not just a story about soccer. It's also a story about an economic system that was imposed 
on Argentina and really on South America uh, in large part in the Caribbean um, and what that economic system, like the true human cost of that economic system, right? It's not just numbers and statistics and GDP and unemployment percentage. It's people who will say goodbye to each other and never see each other again. Um, and so that was, that was a very personal thing to go into. It's also, it's very personal in that it's, it, it, I think the podcast really explores the intimacy the intimate relationship that a lot of immigrants have with violence, mm -hmm. which is something I have been thinking about for, for quite some time, whether it was, I, I worked a lot on the border. Um, and in that sense, it was very personal, you know? I did have to ask, for example, my brother for permission to tell certain stories, right? Um, but just even the violence of saying, you're gonna leave now and you're not maybe gonna say goodbye to people. Um, so, so in many ways, it was a very intimate way of telling a story that I had been telling already um, through news. Um, and it was very cathartic. I mean, I think I had to be in a place. There's this like stereotype of like the, the tortured writer. But I think the truth is I had to be in a place where I could look back peacefully and say, I'm going to write about this thing that happened. Um, but it was very cathartic, and it really, I think it really brought together a lot of the themes that as an immigration reporter and, eco and an economics reporter I've been working on. Yeah. And welcome back to the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. Michael Brown alongside my partner, Sonia Rada and Andre Anderson. And uh, we're just about at the end of the uh, halftime. I hope you enjoyed that uh, little preview of a uh, much longer and very interesting conversation between uh, MC's Vanessa Zambrano and NPR's Jasmine Garst. And again, the topic of that, uh, that show is Lionel Messi, soccer, uh, immigration, uh, very fascinating conversation. So, speaking of fascinating conversations, folks, starting with Sonia, what do you think of the first half? And what uh, talk to me about what uh, MC needs to do in the second half here? Yeah. So, as I mentioned before, I feel that the game was pretty even. I don't think either team had any clear cut chance, except for at the end there, Monroe had an opportunity and. Um, New Ching, you know, I think that was a goal-saving uh, foul that he had there. So that's great to have that mentality and that um, soccer IQ, if you will. Um, but, yeah, so for the second half, I think for either team, you know, I would like to see a lot more control in the midfield. I think we're missing a bit of the midfield in this game. Um, I think that we're very talented. The Raptors have... Uh, number eight, Joao Ribeiro, who is an excellent center midfielder. And I think we haven't seen enough of him. I think he has the ability to control the ball, control the pace of the game. So I would like to see a little bit more of that. Andre, your thoughts on the first half and what what, uh, what lies ahead? Yeah, I think uh, Sonia really hit the nail on the head um, with everything she said. I do think the big thing right here is going to be MC's possession. I mean, they started the first half. Uh, possessing the ball, dominating the game in that aspect. And then things kind of turned, as the tides usually do, um, to Monroe's uh, favor. And then the game kind of evened out in the 50-50 split. I would like to see them just kind of dominate, you know, the second half from the beginning to the end, score a couple goals, and, you know, move on to the next game. So neither team had uh, – had that many opportunities in the first half. The Raptors had a couple early. Uh, their leading scorer, number 14, Carl Romberg, had a couple of uh, good opportunities, uh, wide on one, a little bit high on the other. Um, that was really about it for the Raptors' opportunities. Yeah. I mean, uh, Amadou as well had maybe a chance, and you know, maybe a chance, chance and a half, but not too many um, – I would say uh, clear cut opportunities uh, from MC. And uh, number four, AJ Tessimili, he's now playing in the center mid. So maybe Coach Braz is also thinking a little bit of a personnel change in the midfield uh, to get a different look. And I believe Minhas is now playing wide right. Um, 
So we'll see if that helps the Raptors gain a little bit more control of this game. So to reset the, uh, the stage for you, uh, for everyone, uh, the Raptors came into this one with a record of 8-3-1 and one on the season, 8-1 and one in Maryland Juco. Uh, Monroe Community College comes in undefeated, 6-0-1 oh, on the season. Uh, they tied their last match 1-1 against Mohawk Valley, but other than that, they have an unblemished record. Both teams can put the ball in the back of the net, uh, 47 goals for Monroe this season in seven matches. Uh, the Raptors with 51 goals in their 12 matches. Here goes Carl. We know he's very talented on the ball. And a little bit too many touches there. A little anxious, I thought. Yeah, I think he needs to kind of get that shot off earlier. Uh, you know, the thing is, he's very creative and he, he's very technical on the ball but with the thing with that being the case is that maybe he wants to take four five six touches because he knows he can and he knows that you know the defender can't really stop him rather than just taking like two and then getting the shot off when you take too many of those touches it allows the defenders to come back behind the ball and then exactly do what it did and that's block it so that sets up a corner for the raptors jason guevara uh, has been doing the honors today. This is the third corner of the match for the Raptors. Just one so far for Monroe. And there's the kick. Oh, no. Let's see if the Raptors can wow. maintain possession. Look at the Romberg. skill. That's beautiful. That's a foul. That's got to be a foul. He's pushed from behind. The skill, man. Foul on Sean Dickey. Good look at Carl Romberg from Germany. Both teams with a uh, very international rosters. And there's the the push down in the from behind. So the Raptors uh, with the kick. Let's see who's going to take it. Number three, Yoshke Ono, and number 12, Guevara. And Guevara takes it, gets it to sing. He tries the header, nothing happening. Didn't get a lot on that header. Now, this is probably where Monroe wants to be. You know, they finally got down. In two MCs half, they have a throw in. They're going to want to kind of keep the ball here. If they do lose it, pressure right away, lock them in, keep them uh, exactly where they are. So we'll see if MC can uh, endure this. Well, and as we saw in the first half, they are an excellent passing team. Uh, well, gave it away pretty quickly. Yeah, they didn't uh, possess it long there. If the Raptors get it back. For those of you just joining us, these two teams have a history. They uh, played last year in the semifinals of the district championship tournament. The Raptors took that one four to one. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, the two second half goals in that match were scored by the Raptors captain, Andres Javit, Javit, and Andres is here today. Uh, he, of course, has graduated from Montgomery College and has gone on to St. Bonaventure University. He is starting for their soccer team, and had, I believe you said he has six goals already this season, Andre. Yeah, yeah, I think he has about oh. six. Oh! Oh! Wow, that was very, very close. That was very close. Romberg almost got that one. And Bowler breathes a sigh of relief. Uh, Booth was able to get behind the, def the defense and slot that ball back. It's unfortunate that Romberg wasn't able to put that bat away. Yeah, that was definitely Raptors' best chance so far. Absolutely. Right on the doorstep. And they're going to try to keep it down there. Where are you? 
Yeah, but to to go uh, back over to Andres, um, Andres has about six goals this season for St. Bonaventure University. He also was just named um, the Athlete of the Week. Um, he's been on a tear for his team, and Andres always has been, even when he was with us at Montgomery College, has been a very dedicated and hardworking student with the 4.0 GPA, obviously one of the best players in the country at the NJCAA level, um, with back-to-back uh leading the goals in the nation on top of that being, I think either first or second in the nation in points as well. So it's incredible to see, you know, type of players that Montgomery college produces, but not just uh, athletes, but student athletes. And, you know, these players having great GPAs and Andres ended up with a full ride at St. Bonaventure. So, which is a division one strong, very strong program. Um, he, he is uh, here with his team. They are going to be, using the Raptors uh, pitch after this match to get a workout in. They're playing uh, in the area this weekend. So it was great to see him, and uh, he seems had a chance to talk to him for a minute or two. He's very happy. He said things are really going great. Romberg wanted something. Not sure what. Probably a call of some sort. Didn't get it. Good look at uh, Damian Bowler, the keeper for Monroe. We're in the second half, and obviously we're still scoreless. Now, even though it's October, the sun is out, and I'm pretty sure it's you know it's quite warm out there. Yeah, I would think the I would think the players are pretty warm out there. And because uh, it's it's kind of humid, it's in the upper 70s, mid to upper 70s right now, even though we're uh, later on here in the afternoon. And uh, it's a little bit humid. Not much breeze, if any. You know, the flag isn't moving at all. No, the flag is just uh, laying there. So... And, of course, these athletes are putting out a, a great effort. You really have to be fit to play this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no hiding out there. Oh, no. That's exactly why, you know, I stopped playing a long time ago. <laughs> you will, you know, I, I can't be running this much anymore. If you're not in shape, there's nowhere to hide on a soccer pitch. Or if you're hurt. Yeah. Great. B oh, oh, Carl should sort have of ran into that. That was a great ball over the top. That was by number four, A.J. Tessalini, trying to find Romberg. He's been all over the place. He started off at the right back, then he got moved to the right wing, and now he's playing in the midfield. And you can see that he's impacting the game for sure. Raptors' back line really has not been tested much except for that last play there in the, in the first half and one or two other attacks. But for the most part, they've been playing up and really haven't been all that challenged. But you could probably say the same thing for the back line for Monroe. Raptors have had a couple of good opportunities, including the one just a couple of minutes ago. Now, here's an opportunity. Oh, and, oh, great. oh. and that is a goal. I was going to say great save, but. Morrow got, got his shot. hands on he it. He did have his hands on it. And then it caromed off the hands and bounced into the net. So, an early goal here in the second half. Who are they crediting? I think it was um, Brandon Johnson, number seven. Yes, yeah, it, was. it was. That's right. Brandon Johnson, number seven, who is the leading scorer for uh, Rochester, uh, for uh, Monroe coming in. I'm sorry. He's tied for. 
the lead. He now has the lead. He's now the leading scorer <laughs> yeah. with seven, yes. You're yes. getting there. You're getting there. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> yeah. He's got seven goals on the season. And I think that Monroe's patience paid off. Um, if you see the center midfielder picks his head up, doesn't just try to take a crazy shot, finds uh, number 11, Liam Cowie on the left, slotted ball through, and then Cowie is able to find uh, Johnson in the middle for an easy tap in. Well, you know, the, the strange thing is, or the ironic thing, is that hearkening back to their match last year in the districts, uh, one of the the only score uh, of the match by Monroe was by Brandon Johnson. Mm. So he's now scored on MC two years in a row. He's a dynamic player. Plays out wide on the right. Um, but right there, you saw he did cut in, uh, make a you know making a run from the right hand side to the middle to get onto that cross to score. So dynamic player. And. There's a good shot of Andres Javit. Briefly. I'm sure he would like to be out on the field. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he was a tyrant for MC. Uh, they would love to have him. Well, let's see what the Raptors can do here. There's still a lot of time. Lots of time. Long way from the end of this match. Raptors uh, would love to answer quickly. No doubt. <coughs> Pasolini. Ron Bird. Let's get a good cross in. Biacci. Ooh. Oh. Just a little high on that uh, set play. Are they calling a free kick? It might have been a handball. Handball, yeah. So, we'll take it. A free kick for the Raptors after a handball call inside the box. Uh, no, outside the, the box. Outside, outside the box. The, yeah. 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 See a replay right here. So, uh, Yoshke Ono. I'm sorry, Guevara takes it. Biachi. Biachi's had a good game. He is. He has. He's solid. He's a hard worker as well. He get the shirt tucked in. Usually when you see you know a player with a shirt tucked in, you know he's gonna be running all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Romberg being held. That's by a yellow number card. Twenty three. Uh, Demetrios Kira's Nazis. Yeah, I'm sure I just botched that one. So, uh, sorry, Demetrios. You got the first name right. I got the first name right. And I'm going to let Sonia pronounce the last name because she played in Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. Kiriasis. Kiriasis. Both of my uh, compatriots in the booth today have played soccer all over the world. But you know what, Michael? We never talk about you and the excellent work that you've been doing here at <laughs> MCTV since 2001. You are a living legend, and we are so happy and honored to be here by your side. Well, very true. You're, you're embarrassing me. And, uh, <laughs> now you know how we feel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just love it. I, I, my, one of my uh, great honors was to, uh, to be able to cover MC Athletics as, as much as I did. And uh, I fought to cover more and uh, was never satisfied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with, uh, but uh, any, any chance to uh, cover MC Athletics was always a thrill for me. Um, I just looked at it as a way to help the athletes and give them some attention and yeah, help them get scholarships and, and you know, you did a lot of you did help a lot because back a few years back, you would have to do 
the coverage on your own and a lot of the games that you shot I can speak for myself the coverage that you had allowed me to make highlight videos and help me go on to other opportunities and I know I'm not the only one so we appreciate you so much well that's uh, that was my that was one of the real benefits of being able to do it was uh, unexpected fr frankly when I first started doing it um, was being able to help athletes move on to the next level and uh, that was just a real added plus. Yeah, great work. I mean, I told this, I will forever remember when you interviewed me, you know, so like things like that uh, definitely will have a lifelong impact on um, all the players and they remember when they played in college and had, you know, the highlight of them on TV or you know, they had a media day where they're able to show their friends and family and things like that. So, outstanding work, uh, Mr. Brown, but also by MCTV as well. Well, that's for sure. As you saw that incredible uh, drone shot, you see the, the wonderful work being done here by the N MCTV production crew. Uh, it's just an amazing group of individuals. Um, and they, they're never satisfied. They're always trying to be better. Uh, they are, they stay on the cutting edge of everything uh, to do with television and video production, which is an ever changing field. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing just in the short amount of time that I was involved, how much things changed. Meanwhile, Raptors need to get something in the back of the net here. They keep going vertically from the same direction where the ball has just come from. I think they, they could really push Monroe a little bit out of their out of position if they found the midfield, switch the ball versus going the same side. I've seen that a couple of times from the back line, just playing vertically. Yeah, I noticed that as well. I'm a big component or you know uh, of the ball on the ground that's like kind of how i just enjoy football ball on the ground tiki taka moving about that way and if you do have to play those long balls i do like to see them diagonal so from a center back or from a, a center midfielder or whoever a left back right back anyone but going towards the wingers instead of playing it straight down the middle where the one forward has to go against two you know big strong athletic center backs um so uh, to you know Ditto what you said, uh, Sonia. I would love to see the balls kind of going more out wide, more so than just kind of going straight down the middle. And I believe Oliver Skinner has checked into the game for Nathan Booth. So that's our third forward in the game. That's so the first, uh, I believe that is the first we've seen Oliver in this one. And uh, Oliver is among the, uh, the team leaders in goals. Um, He's in second on the team with six coming in. Wow, great block. Second on the team in, in points and second on the team in shots on goal, Oliver Skinner. Number 11 from England. Again, the Raptors did play yesterday. Um, Monroe did not. Monroe hasn't played in several days. Um, could that have an effect, guys? What do you think? A hundred percent. I mean, a game a day before, it, it's tough, you know. Ninety minutes, and I'm I'm pretty sure Coach Pedro was looking at the schedule and seeing a back-to-back -back, uh, game, and he was like, "All right, maybe we're playing a, a, a team on a Thursday and a Friday. That Thursday, we might have to maybe not play all of the starters. You know, ninety minutes. Like it, it's a lot of different things like that. But regardless, you play ninety, you play fifty, you play forty-five. I mean." Back-to-back -back days is tiring. You're going to bed sore, waking up still sore, then have to play again. That's always the worst. What do you think, Sonia? Yeah, absolutely. It's not fun to play that way. You're obviously not at your best. Um, I know that I had to play. There it just shouldn't be allowed, you know? <laughs> I, yeah. feel, I feel like there should be a rule against – because you, you're also more prone to injury. Mm -hmm. um, 
because you obviously want to give 100% in, in the games and, you know, your muscles might not, your mind might be saying one thing, but your muscles are going to say something else. So. Yeah. And, of course, the Raptors now, they played two days in a row here on, on, the, uh, on the synthetic surface. Yeah. That takes a toll as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh there's Skinner. A, oh. He that needed was, to get a cleaner strike on that. He just didn't get enough on it. That was a beautiful kick. My guess is that this was a quirk in the schedule. Um, and Pedro Braz, head coach for the Raptors, had to schedule this match because as we've said, Monroe is from Rochester, New York. They probably making a trip down here, um, and they'll probably play at least one other match while they're down here, would be my guess. So Pedro, I know, always looking to challenge his team and uh, always looking to improve the team's uh, ranking. They need to play these D1 matches. And so it's not ideal. Now, granted, yesterday the Raptors uh, had a rather uh, easy match, so to speak, uh, beating Hagerstown 10 nil, which is probably equivalent to a 70 to nothing American football score. I mean, it's, it's right up there at the. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that was a hard hit yeah, on that was, Romberg. Yeah, that was tough. And he went down. Nice sportsmanship there by uh, Damian Bowler. I've seen that out of both teams today. Uh, it really has been, I think, a clean match. Uh, not a lot of chippiness. Um, nothing cheap. And that, that's good to see. So yeah. Good look there at Carl Romberg. I'm glad he's up. Leading score for the Raptors on the season was 17 goals. Tied for first in the country. But uh, we are more than halfway through the, the second half, uh, and the Tribune's on top of the Raptors 1-0 on a Brandon Johnson goal early in the second half. We were score scoreless at half, obviously. The Tribunes are, are doing their best to slow down the game a little bit. Obviously, they have a lead, a little bit of a cushion. So they're definitely growing into the game more and, and controlling it. But I still think the Raptors have an opportunity, and it's like they just need to find a way to get yeah, I mean, 23 minutes left in this game seems like a lot of time, but it's not. So this is the time when MC needs to score now and then get that momentum and then score again. They want to get up as soon as possible and then put maybe another two, three, uh, you know, on the scoreboard so that they, that they can leave here with the win. But right now, Monroe is doing what they need to do to keep this lead. They're holding on to the ball. They're maintaining possession. And like you said, Sonia, it's kind of a slow-paced game. There's a shot. No problem for Morrow. And keep an eye out on Singh. He's limping. I think he kind of went into a tackle. And uh, hopefully he can recover from that. Sonia is referring to Ish Singh. Uh, one of the back, uh, one of the center backs for the Raptors, and also a co-captain, and uh, one of the real heartbeats of the team. Yeah, he has a fiery energy. Really good leader. <laughs> yeah, he really helps set the tone. Kind of a coach on the field, and uh, no call there as Romberg was thrown down by Anton Kelly. Raptors with possession. Raptors in white, Tribunes in the dark uniforms. I 
I feel like now would be a good time for the Raptors to make a few subs. It seems like some of the players are a little losing the energy. And like Dre was saying, this is the time to put, you know, get a goal in and you need more energy. So do have a couple of uh, Raptors warming up on the sidelines. Amadou Koida for sure. I'm not too, not clear who the other. That's Andres uh, Rojas ah. also warming up as well. I think that might be actually the tallest player on the team. Or, you know, one of the tallest and one of the shortest kind of warming up <laughs> together. <laughs> Amadou Koida, is, he is a tall guy. He's hard to miss. That's a foul. And that's going to be a foul. And Tessalini. Well, that was a good idea. They tried to go quick, but mm -hmm. the ref made him come back. So let's see what MC does here. Sean Dickey pleading his case for Monroe. To no avail. You don't see many athletes winning arguments with uh, with officials. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. Never. I don't think there's ever been. Well, actually, I was going to say, I don't think there's ever been a time when, you know, a player has argued with a ref and the ref has changed his mind. But then I have heard a story from back in the day when Michael Jordan actually, uh, there was a foul called on Michael Jordan. And then he said that he was telling the ref, like, no, it's not a foul. And the ref said, are you sure? And he said, yes. And so the ref changed the call and listened to him. <laughs> but it is Michael Jordan, so <laughs> I could see how, you know, that would uh, happen. Yeah, that might carry some weight. Yeah. Here's an opportunity. Oh, wow. Great tackle. By Great tackle there on Skinner. By Kiri Kiriasis. Did, did I attempt that better? <laughs> not bad. Ki Kiriasis. I'm going to go on a first-name basis with him. <laughs> <laughs> Raptors with the uh, corner, and Ono going to do the honors this time. Yoshike Ono from Japan. Good service. Excellent. Oh, Ooh, that was a close opportunity there for Minhas. He was heads and shoulders above everybody else. Good look at Daniel, number 15. Here come the subs. Here they come. I believe that's yep, Andres and, and Amadou. I Andres, Andres Rojas and number 33, Amadou Koida, have checked back in for the Raptors. I believe Coach Braz has switched to a three back. So like, taking one a defender out to try and create some more offense. There's a shot wide by Romberg. It's a good point. Playing three in the back. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Hey, how how do you like that as a center back, Sonia? Um, I think playing three in the back is not bad, but you just really have to be on the same page and understand your roles. Um, because you need to play a little bit more compact because you don't want to get split. But um, it, it's not bad, honestly. If you have your, you know, in, in, a, in a situation like this, it's needed because you need to, you, you're not going to score. Um, clearly, you need more numbers up. So mm -hmm. I think it's needed. I think you need to be versatile enough to be able to, to play it. To play, yeah. But understand that you may be sacrificing something. So. Yeah, no, I liked playing three in the back as a center back um it kind of gives you that like especially if you're playing the center of the three mm -hmm. in the back three you're almost like a, a deep playmaking center back or a deep playmaking midfielder at times because it's just look how much space brian has and it's just him mm -hmm. so but it is a little bit more difficult on defense obviously like you said you got to play more compact um so that the through ball doesn't split you but at the same time, teams usually play like a 4-3-3 or like three up top. So it's almost like a man marking situation, which becomes a lot harder. That's a foul. Yeah, that's going to be a foul. Let's get her. And Monroe has been playing in a low block uh, ever since they scored. 
not necessarily parking the bus, but they're not pressing as high. So I think it's a good move from Coach Pedro. Biachi runs it down. We're down to our, almost down to the 15 minute mark here. So far, just one goal in the match. That was by Brandon Johnson for Monroe early in the second half. Raptors have had a couple of good opportunities since then, um, but haven't been able to convert. Cassellini with a nice save there, but Monroe takes it. Good look there at Sasha Schneider from Lutusburg, Switzerland. I heard Switzerland's very beautiful. I've heard the same thing. It is. You've been? I live there, yeah. Oh, yeah? I played there. Oh, oh, oh that's right. You played in Switzerland. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Wow. That was one of your first stops out of MC, wasn't it, uh, Sonia? Yes. It, it was so nice going on away trips <laughs> because you're on the team bus and you're literally driving through a postcard. It was yeah, <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to fall asleep. You just want to keep looking out the window. And I think I saw rooms, uh, pictures of the rooms where they put you and that was up in the mountains, too, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so I was for uh, one of the we went we made it to the finals and we had to go um stay overnight and the views just were incredible that was a great experience you're telling me that switzerland has better views than rockville maryland <laughs> <laughs> well I the never mountains said are that. a little higher <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just different <laughs> <laughs> the mountains are a little higher than they are here in rockville yeah no, i've never heard one bad thing about switzerland so definitely have to check it out one day Good view, uh, good shot there of Amadou Koita for the Raptors. Raptors would love to see him get on the board. Anybody, frankly, <laughs> yeah. at this point. And you know, he's been sitting for a while because he played, he started the game, mm -hmm. got subbed out, didn't come back in in the first half. And then you add the 15 minutes of halftime and then checking in at the end. Sometimes that can be really, really hard to to get your body going. Of course, he's very young, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's easier when you're young. <laughs> There's a shot wide. One nil Monroe. This is not what MC uh, would have thought they would have been in a situation they would have been in, but it is what it is, and they got to figure it out. There's a great ball over to Carl. Romberg. Romberg. Battles. Raptors with the throw in. Oh, wow. That was aggressive. That was an aggressive the move there by uh, Andres Rojas for the Raptors, number 20. And down goes Bowler, Damian Bowler. I wonder if he has a Granny Smith apple in his pocket. <laughs> 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 Sonia was referring to the last time we were here uh, covering uh, the men's soccer match between Montgomery College and Frederick and we had a close-up on the uh, Frederick goalkeeper who inexplicably <laughs> pulled a Granny Smith apple out of his pocket during an injury uh, situation in front of the, the goal. 
And we're all like, is that an apple? <laughs> and I believe Sonia is the first to uh, identify it as a uh, Granny Smith. That was something uh, I've never seen. And if these two have never seen it, then it's odd <laughs> for, a, for a soccer match. I'm now uh, expecting the unexpected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So ever since that moment, the Granny Smith Apple has become the unofficial mascot of Montgomery College Television. <laughs> yeah. That was a great turn. Oh, man. They just haven't been able to hold on to it. No, the, the possession that they were, you know, that they had in the first half has totally disappeared, especially, wow, especially in the second half. They haven't made more than, I would say, what, three, four passes that have connected. And foul on uh, Raptors. Get it going quickly. Down to Skinner. Offsides. They're just being very predictable. You know, they receive the ball, maybe play out of the back, the and then the defense is always looking just to play that long ball. It just has become very predictable, and Monroe's ready for it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is difficult uh, as a defender to kind of track that ball when it's coming in the air to kind of, you know, win out the header. But I would rather do that having confidence in myself and no, I'm saying myself as an, you know, a player for them, having confidence in them and, you know, being athletic and strong enough to win that ball in the air, then have to go against a team that's going to play the ball on the ground and pass it around me. You know, that's way more difficult to defend than defend the header. So I think the game plan might need to change a bit for MC to kind of break down this Monroe defense that's been strong today. And, as you mentioned earlier, Michael, one of the best uh, defenses um, in the nation. Yeah, they have given up less than a goal a, a match. They average .43 goals against. Um, it's really evident why. If you see any time that any of the Raptors have had the ball near the box, the 18-yard box, there is immediately somebody blocking the shot. Um, You've seen them slide tackling, diving, not diving in a bad way, but as in slide tackling. And, um, and it, it, they, you can really tell why their defense is one of the top in the nation. The Raptors have really only had one or two opportunities here in the second half. And only a handful in the first. There's still plenty of time. Great touch. There goes Carl. And that's a PK. That's a PK. And no, that's out that's in the box. Ooh. No, Ooh. that Whoa, that, mm. Well, we don't have VAR here. I know. No. But we do have these incredible cameramen from MCTV. Yeah, we, we do. We will be able to <laughs> yeah. see the replay. Unfortunately, the Here it comes. Yeah, oh, that's in that's the box. definitely <clears throat> in the box. Let me open up this window and yell out to the ref. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him if he'd like to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> Because we can show it to you. Well, maybe we can, you know, integrate that into some of the next games that we do or next season. It would have to be a whole <laughs> league thing, though. They wouldn't just allow one <laughs> one team. <laughs> it's like MC is the only school that has VAR. Here it is. Oh, oh wow. That was a close one. Romberg had a lot on it. If they had called that in the box, then it's a PK. Yep. Then it's one-on-one. -on -one. A much higher chance of scoring a goal than it is taking a free kick. 
Absolutely. But here is the free kick one more time, and that was wow. very close. You see Carl's reaction as well. He was like, oh, I wanted that one. Oh, man. He plays with a lot of intensity. He a does. Lot of passion. He does. He's a very expressive player. Yeah. A good one as well. And we are under seven minutes to go. And uh, Raptors really want to get on the board here. And this is where Monroe's going to eat up as much time as they can every oh, time yeah. the ball stops. Oh, yeah. They're not in any hurry at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Koita. And the time is uh, the scoreboard is becoming another opponent for the Raptors. <laughs> yeah, especially the way that Monroe's wasting time right now. I mean, they've seemed to perfected that. Oh, they, they've got it down. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, the clock just continues to move on. Booth is back in. MC's ball. Raptors now obviously in a rush. Oh. Yeah, time is it's ticking down. They, they have to they have to score now. Yeah. If they're gonna wanna at least put two um behind. See look, here they go. This time wasting is no joke. No, they're taking their sweet time. And I'm sure if MC were in their shoes, they'd be doing the same thing. Hey. It's part of the gamemanship. It is. It's definitely part of the game. Yeah, I know I would be. You know, I might, I might pull up for a cramp right now, one of those. <laughs> no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have to tie your shoe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Under five minutes. I think MC can use this game to learn from. Hopefully, you know, if they take a look back at the film and just find those areas obviously as it's coming down the end of the season you're going to continue to be tested by opponents like this so mm -hmm. you can absolutely. always use these experiences absolutely these are the types of teams they're going to face in the postseason which as we said earlier is fast approaching raptors with just three regular season matches left then of course they'll have the region 20 tournament should they uh win the regions, then they would advance to districts. So, and that's a two weekend uh, situation. So, postseason right around the corner. And it'll be all D1 teams at that point. The Raptors play a mixture of uh, D1 and, do, and D2 teams during a regular season, as does Monroe. But uh, once you get to the postseason, it's all D1. 
Yeah, so no, none of those games are going to be easy. No. They'll all be tight, hard fought, physical. Yellow card uh, given out to Jason Guevara. Yeah, Guevara. He did kind of come in with the studs up there. That's just frustration at the end. Yeah. And that's uh, Nishizono for uh, for Monroe, who was fouled. There's still time, though. There is. Oh. That's going to be a foul. Romberg was fouled, had his uh, legs taken out from under him. Yeah, this is where MC's going to push everyone up. Yeah, they've got everybody up. <laughs> Even Morrow is yeah. quite a bit up. Meanwhile, we're down to just over two minutes to go. And they they are stopping the clock to uh, lay down the law here, I believe. Yeah, Brian Nuchang, the captain for MC, is seeming to, you know, let the ref know, like, hey, we don't have much time left. I have to play tough. And Anton... Uh, Kelly, they were mixed up in it. Anton Kelly from Monroe. Oh. Ooh. He tried a bicycle kick. They missed the header. Put it back in. Here it comes. Oh. And number 22. Out of to feast for the Raptors, ran into the keeper, Bowler. Seems to be a yep, big punt there. Big punt. We're looking for someone to flick the ball on. There's height on the field right now. A bunch of battles going on right now. Oh, yeah. Just about uh, just over one minute to go. This is almost like when you're a kid, five year five year old is <laughs> just <laughs> everyone scrapping. Kicking. Yeah, everyone's kicking, everyone just scrapping. Following the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it reminds me. Of. I mean, you're trying to do it's it's hard because oh, Ooh. you need to do whatever you can and things aren't flowing your way. But mm -hmm. that was a good up by Bowler, the goalie secure that ball he's been good with his hands yes he's very been very good see replay right here i mean he went up strong oh, that, was, that was no easy play either. no and he's not the tallest guy either but no he gets up there and he, he knows what he's doing he's powerful very much so a strong looking young man Took that one like a, a free safety in football. Yeah. That last kick. <clears throat> Down to the 10 second mark. So it 
looks like it's not going to be the Raptors day here. And that is the fun, that is it. We are uh, all finished here on the Rockville campus of Montgomery College as the Raptors drop this one one nil to Monroe. Quick thoughts, Sonia? Just something to learn from. It's a, it's a good game to learn from. Watch the film and just review, find out what the mistakes were and just get better from here. Andre? Yeah, uh, MC started off well, but throughout the game, instead of, you know, continuing that and progressing to playing better, it kind of decreased and uh, they kind of let up today. So just like Sonia said, something to learn from. Three games left in the season. They have to win the next three. Yeah, I would agree. And this would this will be the toughest of the of their remaining matches. So the Raptors fall one nil. The uh, only uh, goal of the match was scored early in the second half by Brandon Johnson for Monroe with the win. Monroe uh, improves to seven zero and one on the season, so they stay undefeated. With the loss, the Raptors fall to eight four and one. It was a it was a great match. It was a good match. Um, very evenly played, but uh, but uh, Monroe takes it uh, with that uh, goal by uh, Brandon Johnson, who is their leading scorer. So that's appropriate. So uh, for everyone with at uh, Montgomery College Television who did such a wonderful job today, we appreciate the, the great looks, the great camera work. Um, the drone shots, there we go, right on, right on cue, cue yep. the beautiful <laughs> drone shot. So for Sonia Rada, Andre Anderson, I'm Michael Brown. Thanks so much for watching NJCAA Men's College Soccer on MCTV.